Okay, this is my overall schedule for the week. Uh, with Good Friday coming up, um, there's no school on Friday. And our and I do have the coding club on Thursday. And I have switched because of my duty switch now. So my duty is now on Tuesday instead of on the Monday. Oh, also I will be away on Wednesday. So Ms. Destro is going to be in as my supply teacher for that day. Um, Monday morning we have a learning skills assembly so that will impact on the literacy block a little bit um, but when we come back I want to brainstorm ideas of how to demonstrate the new learning skills so we're going to get into some of the writing and some thinking behind them and then as we continue with our library that the students are creating and getting really into I want to look at the system for signing out the books um, and um, looking at how we can write about the system so that others can read and understand it, which will get us kind of into procedural writing so people know what to do and how they're going to get their books. And then on Wednesday, um, when I'm not there, the students can start to look at classes that they want to come and borrow the books, um, and then some specifics. So when can they come? Uh, how, how do they get the book? Um, or how do they book a time? And... Um, I really want to focus in on adding some details to our writing done with the supply teacher, but um, with the idea of when they create the media text, how can they provide enough information so that the other people know. And then if she collects those, then on um, Thursday we can look at distributing so people know what's coming up. And then on Thursday, I'm looking in at the roles and responsibilities of the staff in the library and the staff being the students and um, adding details to make our writing uh, more specific so that people know exactly what are all these people going to do. Is everyone going to be involved in helping people in the library and if not how will we be setting up turns and things like that so the students that are really involved in it or really interested in it can help just kind of set those rules. Okay, so um, uh, for math on Monday, we're going to look at this idea for Math Talk Mondays, kind of connecting back to our three acts and this idea of the sandwiches and the total number and the impact that size has on them. Um, but then we can also get into that whole idea and like fair shares and fractions and things like that so that they can kind of understand what happens as we divide them up and making sure that those are uh, equal and it, it does tie into our math problem so it's a good one to kind of get them thinking and then on Tuesday I want to explore something that I think will impact for the rest of the week because there is kind of an art connection which is tying in with some of our language so I'd like to look a little bit at shapes and explore the idea of shapes in a given area and I want to connect it with um, art P P A Mondrian's um, work and how we can use a single shape to fill up a given area and does that work for all shapes and what happens when we cut certain shapes and half does the shape remain the same why why does it not um, what impact can that have and um, what impact might that have on the actual artwork itself so kind of looking at giving kind of a focus a little bit for that math learning so then on Wednesday, I want to look a bit at creating these shape um, pictures using these uh, given bags of shapes. And students would be working in groups of two. This will be when I'm not there. Um, but they would have to document what they've created. They're going to have to make a picture together that makes sense. Somehow document it, which I think will hopefully get them into kind of counting up the number of shapes to be accurate. So there is that counting piece that I think would be good for many of them um, as well. There's a lot of symmetry and stuff that falls in here too. So all of that piece kind of comes together um, for them. And then what happens when we take out a shape? So if I said you can no longer use squares, what impact is that going to have on the actual picture itself? Um, and how one shape can be used to make other ones. They can start to really kind of explore the attributes of the different um, shapes. And then this will lead us to Thursday when I would like us to make the background for our play of the bitch and go outside and create a list of what needs to be included in that outdoor scene. What might it look like? Um, how could we actually use the physical space? Where will we hang it and what impact will that have? Dividing up the paper, what kind of jobs will the different people do? Where are they going to put um, the work? What needs to be created? So who might make the background? Who might work on making um, the stuff that gets cut out or, you know, painted on, like putting all those different pieces um, 
together, we can still look at covering up the floor and stuff for it as well. So um, looking at taping off the area of the floor for it too and really kind of making use of our given area. Okay, and then uh, we are going to finish our shared reading text from um, last week. We have a new our new nonsense word play. It does have a musical component, which could even lead to some kind of dance component too. So the whole thing of music, art, dance, drama, it's all kind of coming together. And lots of opportunities to review colors, sight words, rhyming words, and then um, perform the play. And that performance will be the following week. It'll be the week after Easter. Um, but what we can work on is um, finishing off because it was a longer place, so we just did like two of the pages this week and we'll do the other two next week and give, or this coming week and give specific roles to people and then kind of put it together um, to do our performance and figure out how and when we're going to do the performance and work on reading the play together.